20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Chapter 8, The Coral Cemetery. The next morning, I awoke to find myself back in my cabin. My door was unlocked, and I assumed I was no longer a prisoner. So I gathered up my scientific notes and went into the lounge to work on them. I saw nothing of Captain Nemo until he entered the lounge later in the afternoon. His red eyes showed that he had not slept at all the night before, and his whole face had a look of sadness on it, a look I had never seen there before. After pacing back and forth for several minutes, he came over to me and asked, Are you a doctor, Monsieur Aranax? Why, yes, I answered in surprise. I practiced for several years before starting my work at the Paris Museum. Well then, would you mind treating one of my men? Certainly, I answered, and followed him to a cabin in the crew's quarters. There, stretched out on a bed, was a man of about forty, with a strong, rugged face. His head was wrapped in blood-stained bandages. I removed the bandages and examined the wound. It was horrible. The skull had been smashed by some hard instrument, and part of the brain was exposed. The blood had already clotted and turned to a dark red. The man's breathing was very slow. His pulse was weak, and his arms and legs were cold. I realized that death was near. There was nothing I could do for him except to put a fresh bandage on his head. But I couldn't help but wonder if there was some connection between this wounded crewman and the mysterious events of the night before. When I asked Captain Nemo how the man was wounded, he answered me very sharply, That is no business of yours. I am only concerned with his chances. He'll be dead in two hours, I said. Captain Nemo clenched his fists and his eyes filled with tears. How strange to see this man cry. I never believed he could. I didn't see Captain Nemo again until the next morning. I had started to ask him about the dying man when he broke in, inviting the three of us to go on another underwater excursion with him. Ned and Conceal were so eager to say yes that I had no further chance to speak to the captain. Within half an hour, we were all in our diving suits, stepping out on the ocean floor. Captain Nemo led the way and a dozen crew members followed behind us. A gentle slope led us 90 feet below the surface, where I got my first glimpse of the coral kingdom. Coral is the skeleton of a tiny jelly-like sea animal called a polyp. These polyps live in colonies and their skeletons slowly build one upon the other, sometimes forming reefs and islands. Here, the coral formed a stone forest beneath the sea. Thick shrubs and trees made of this rock-like coral were covered with thousands of colorful flower-like polyps. I reached out to pick one of these living flowers, but as my hand drew near, an alarm seemed to spread through the entire colony. The white blossoms darted inside their red cases and vanished from sight. The flowering shrub turned into a bumpy, stony tree. We continued heading downhill until we reached a depth of a thousand feet. Here, the coral formed stone trees connected to each other by beautifully colored vines. Beneath our feet, smaller varieties of coral formed a carpet of flowers that shone like dazzling jewels. In the middle of this magnificent garden was a circular clearing. Mounds of sand were piled up in several places around a large coral cross. These mounds had definitely been formed by the hands of man, not by the sea. Captain Nemo stopped at this clearing and his crew formed a half circle around him. At a sign from their captain, two crewmen stepped forward and began digging a long hole. When they were finished, four other men approached the hole carrying a long white bundle on their shoulders. Suddenly, I understood. Captain Nemo and his men had come to bury their shipmate in their own private cemetery on the ocean floor. As soon as the body was placed in its grave and covered over, Captain Nemo and his men knelt down to pray. Ned, Conceal, and I knelt too. After several minutes with our heads bowed, the funeral procession started back to the Nautilus. Once we were on board, Captain Nemo explained that the wounded man had died during the night. We have buried him in our peaceful cemetery, he said. The coral will now seal his grave forever. At least there, Captain, your dead can sleep quietly beyond the reach of sharks. Yes, Captain Nemo re replied bitterly, beyond the reach of sharks and men. End of chapter 8.